Hello and welcome to The Shed. In today's video we're going to be talking about setting up card scrapers. Hope you enjoy. So for those of you who haven't seen my introduction video I'm just going to do a quick overview of what a card scraper is. It's a piece of punched steel, usually in this rectangular style. Sometimes you can have them in these shaped styles for getting into curves and stuff, but they're less effective than the most common ones which are these which you would use on a flat surface. In order for them to work they require the turning of a burr probably asking what's a burr, well if you look up here you can see on the top there there's little hooks and they're extruded generally using a burnisher like this which is steel that is harder than the card scraper. So when you buy one of these card scrapers from the store you obviously have to prepare it so it's able to take a proper burr. Now there's a couple of things we have to do to ensure that. We have to ensure that this edge is flat all the way along here and that it is it, these sides are square to it because in order to form that burr we require sharp corners on the edge here and that's what we need to do in this initial setup. Now this is not sharpening this is just preparing it so we can sharpen it. It could be considered part of the sharpening process but not necessarily. So to ensure that you're flat along here Just run some sharpie along there and in your sharpening process that'll determine whether it's uh, flat along there. Now technically because when, when you operate these they're flexed you don't actually need to have it sharpened all the way along. Generally this middle sort of third is where you want it to be flat and so don't worry too much if it tapers off a little bit to the edges because that's kind of irrelevant, it doesn't really matter. But if you are going to use the full face of a scraper, which you can do, then you will want to ensure that that is all the way along. But there are better scrapers for doing that process. A few videos back I did a video on how you freehand sharpen a plane blade and the reason I wanted you to learn those techniques is so we can actually sharpen scrapers here freehand without any sort of jigs. Some people do cut a kerf that's dead square and sit it in there and that's how they sharpen it. But I think that's an unnecessary step and I think it gets in the way. So if we've learned just the very basics of how to hold something freehand, then we can sharpen a scraper without needing any extra bits. So let's get back here and I'll show you how I do this. We want to flatten this and keep it square. Now to do that, I bring it across like that. And if you have a little square or any square, you can bring that up there just so you can judge where square is for you. And then once you know where square is, you can hold it and then follow proper techniques, locking your elbows in, locking the wrists, and then rocking back and forth using your body, and you'll be able to sharpen that relatively square. It doesn't matter if it goes out a little bit. Uh, after all, we are freehanding it. We're not looking for dead lab accuracy here. We just want it square enough that it's going to do the job. You will note that I'm actually keeping it right across. You can do it like this, but you're more prone for the card scraper to rock around. So in this process here, what we're best to do is slant it across, and that allows you to use the entire surface of your stone as well. And because we're moving up and down like this, it actually just gives that diagonal referencing, which makes it easier to hold. So we sit it on that angle, roughly square it up, lock everything in. You can see along here that permanent mark is gone, which means we're square along here, and there'll be a, an ever so slight sort of roughness to the edge of the side, and that's a very, very slight burr, and we want to remove that. So we next come back in, and we lie it down, and we're going to run like this. Might take more or less time depending on how big the burr was that you had on there, and if this is a little bit out of flat. And so what you're doing is you're feeling along here until that slight burr is gone. So I can feel that's nice and flat. Then we can flip it over and we can do it on all four of these sides in preparation. I'm going to prepare just this side because this side I prepared off camera so we can use that. So I've just got to remove the burr off this one here. 
So now I've got this pretty much prepared. I'm now going to move to my 1200 grit stone and we're going to repeat that same process. All it's going to do is give it a little bit more of a polish, which means when you use the burnisher, it's just got a, a nice smooth surface to run on and it's going to give you a better quality burr because it's more polished. So now that we've done that initial setup, we move into the actual sharpening or creating the burr to do the work that a scraper requires. Now, I'm going to break this down into two sections. There's a more rough way of doing this. If you're just doing a bit of rough removal, removing finish off something like this, um, or you're doing a bigger area and it's not really your final finish, you're just removing a, a little bit of roughness from a board that might not be for fine furniture or, or, or the like, and we can create what's really a quick burr. So we're going to jump down here and we're going to do the quick burr first, and then we'll move into how to actually turn the burr for a finer, more refined burr using the, uh, the burner shop. So just before I show you this first process, I just wanted to show you the state the scraper is actually currently in once we've prepared it. So we can see here, we're not really doing anything more than just pulling a little bit of dust off it. And that's to be expected. So this first process you can do using two tools. You can use a mill file for it, which kind of works, but I don't think that's as good as using my 400 grit diamond stone, which is why I told you that's what I was using. So if you were going to use the file, you get whichever side you want your rough burr, and you can just run it back and forwards like this on your file, and then feel until you've got a burr or a hook there, and it's that simple. But I find you get a better, quicker result using something like a 400 grit diamond stone. We're going to come back into that technique where we were doing the edge, and we're going to hold it at that 90 degrees, and we're going to come back and forwards on this. You're going to feel for that burr. Now, I can now feel that burr. If you use the very tip of your fingertips, you're going to actually pick up burrs much easier. This side's got a much heavier burr than this side, which it, which is fine. We're not looking for a refined, definitive burr that's the same in all corners here. So in order to turn this burr, there's a couple of things you can do. You can just cut a basic kerf in a piece of wood, shove your scraper in there and hold it. Or what I prefer to do is just grab one of these wooden screw clamps and just clamp it straight in. It doesn't really matter where, as long as you're supporting most of it all the way along. This is fairly solid now, it's held down, it's clamped right up, it's grabbed, it's got a little bit of flex in it, but that doesn't really matter too much. Because after all, right out on these things, because we're actually pushing down on it, there's not too much sideways movement. This is just to hold it and allow enough clearance for a burnisher to get in here to actually do the job it's meant to. Now when it comes to burnishers, there are a whole lot, like I mentioned in the introduction video, and there's flat ones, long ones, little short ones that have already got their angles fixed into them. There's something called the Acubur, which is a bar that's already got the angles CNC'd in them and you can pull that across. We're just doing the very basic here. One thing that some people suggest, and I'm not sure if it's 100% necessary, but I do like to do it, and so we don't generate a lot of friction. I've just got one of these rag and a can oilers and I'm just gonna put a very thin layer of oil onto my burnisher that's going to allow it to slide across a little bit easier without any catches and it's going to give you a better quality burr. So the idea is that we're going to run along here back and forwards two or three times up to five and what that's doing is just preparing the steel it's kind of mushrooming the steel out a little bit on these sides so it's taking the top steel pushing it over the square edge here and if you actually run along here after doing that, you can actually feel an ever so slight burr already forming. So when it comes to actually folding this burr over, the idea is that we don't want the burr to be too aggressive. We obviously want it there. You can make a bigger burr if you want it to be more aggressive, but we can just do that straight off a stone. So we're looking for roughly a five degree turn in the burr to form a decent hook, and that allows the uh, angle of the card scraper when you actually go to use it so you don't have to face it too far forward you can actually hold it up and keep your knuckles out of the way of the use of it. So what I like to do is I run across the top as you've just seen and then 
about five degrees I'm going to eyeball it so flat is here five degrees is down not far so it's barely lifting I'm only moving it maybe a few millimeters so what I do is I run across here and I just drop the angle ever so slightly and that should give us a burr which I can feel now sometimes you'll have to come back in and do this process again because you might have missed it ever so slightly and that's fine you can come back and do it again if you need to so obviously I was doing that on my side now you can turn it around if you're more comfortable doing that or you just lift it slightly and do the other side and that one's actually formed a slightly better burr than the one on this side so what I'm going to do is just run a cup there more times along there and now I can feel a decent quite even burr on both sides a lot of you probably already know but for those of you that don't grab your card scraper and you're flexing it in the middle and then you're actually finding your angle to attack which means that's why I wasn't too worried about out here because we're only really working with this central area when we're actually scraping because you're flexing it your fingers cover the rest of it it kind of pulls the corners up out of the way so they're not making contact and you're making contact in this middle area that you're flexing normally on the peak of the bend you can also turn them sideways and pull them along the timber like this I don't find that works too well for a card scraper some people like to do that but in a pinch you could do that but there are better scrapers out there for doing that kind of work and that's why I prefer not to use the card scraper for it but if the card scraper is the only scraper you got then then yes you can you'd hold your hand in on your palm like this and actually pull it along now a caveat with these you're generating friction while you're using them across the timber and the problem you get is that these are a giant heat seek that builds up heat and you can burn your thumbs where you flex them so you just got to be careful with these you can put a fridge magnet on here which I've seen some people do I don't find that works too well but that's up to you if you want to use one of those some people call them a thumb saver and they will allow you to use it a little bit longer as long as you get a strong one that doesn't slide around because I've used other ones and they slide around on the surface and it's very frustrating let's jump down here and we'll show you first with the rough side now how do I know that I've got writing on here so I kept it to the top so I know which side was rough and which side we refined our burr and you can see we're actually taking a little fine shaving here now if I go to the other side likewise we're pulling a little fine shaving And this technique can also work on softwoods such as this where you want to remove some finish it's left quite a rough surface and not that smooth a surface that you would expect a scraper to give you so now what I'm going to do is we're going to use the side where we've just turned the burr we already know what happens when we use our rough side so with our fine side if we look at this you can already see or I can that it's actually a more consistent burr and it's actually leaving a much smoother surface the biggest difference is back onto the pine so we want to go I want to go onto the pine and show you the surface that we get when using this burr when we remove something like finish so we're going to come in here And if we look at this, we once again got that more consistent shaving. It's a little more powdery and that's just the finished powdering. I hope you can see this. This is so, so much smoother. If we look at that side, you can see all the scrapes and scrags in there. And that's what turning a nice smooth burr using a burnisher does for you, as opposed to just a rough, quick removal. Personally, I would always use the burnisher to turn a burr because it just gives you much better results another thing that i did there was show you guys that you can use a card scraper on both hardwoods and softwoods 
And to that end, I just wanted to grab another couple of pieces of pine because I know some of you out there believe that, um, or the consensus is that you can't use scrapers on softer woods like pine. And that is not true. I'm not sure where that's come up from. In my experience, as you just saw, I've used card scrapers on pine. I've used all types of scrapers on pine. And normally there's no real issue with it. So what I've got here is a piece of quite knotty pine. It's a lot of rough reversing grain here. And I want to show you how well a card scraper can deal with this. In the event that you have something like this, this is a really bad example, obviously, because it's actually in a quite a bad state. But I just wanted to show you what it can do. And I am going to be using the correct burr turned side to do this. So we can see we're going straight over here. No tear out. It's not turning a huge burr here. Reason being is that we've got to get rid of these uh, sort of looser pieces before we get down to the full wood to pull a full shaving. So you've seen it in a few minutes there, we've smoothed a lot of this rough grain out. We've not torn out anything on top of these little knots and it's done a very good job. And we're on pine, which makes that job a little bit harder in my opinion, where I find you need a bit of a finer burr for the pine because if it's too aggressive, then it can still catch and tear out in certain circumstances, depending on how soft the pine is, because some of them are obviously softer than others. But you can see how effective it was on that rough piece of construction pine. So now I want to go onto a piece of hardwood down here and just show you that we can do the same thing in the hardwoods as well. So what I've got here in this piece of jar is we've got some knots here, we've got some bigger bits, a little bit of reversing grain here and so it's a little bit rough in spots and we've got these sort of sap lines so what I want to do is show you the card scraper at work on that as well. Now because there is so much reversing grain here you will notice that I'm getting little tiny shavings because they won't stick together in a larger shaving because it's very short grain where there's all this reversing and so it almost looks like powder but we can see that they are actually shavings. And so we can go across the top of where these knots are and it's still a little rough to the touch. And now that's actually feeling quite smooth to the touch obviously where this little dig out here is it's not going to be. And back over here where we've got the sap mark and go straight over the top of that, it's smoothed it out, it's into reversing grain which is nice and smooth right through a lot of this and it didn't tear out anywhere on that sap line. So there you have it folks, I think that little demonstration just down here showed you where the card scraper really excels in reversing grain because on the whole a card scraper doesn't care about the grain. It is still best to use it mostly in the direction of the grain because if you do go across the grain in certain circumstances it can tear it a little bit especially if it's an older timber that's drier uh, the card scraper can tear that and that's why I still advocate for going with the grain for the majority of card scraper work and where you've got some reversing grain and things like that the card scraper doesn't snag in those so it doesn't tend to chip it out like a plain blade might do you're not always going to have that happen with a plain blade but if you do, that's where the card scraper comes in, especially for little spot work that you saw me do down here. So if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing down below. While you're down there, please sound off in the comments. What's your experience with card scrapers, if any, and different burnishes that you might have experienced with? Please let everyone know down below so we can try and find the best solution for everyone. And if you'd like to support me a little bit further, please consider checking me out on Instagram and also on Patreon. And if you'd like to see another great video such as this, please check out the video up here where I show you the introduction to scrapers, if that interests you. And on the screen here, I will put the other two videos for the cabinet scraper and the scraper plane when those videos go live. Bye for now.